like you mean it. Shame me. Whatever's not like you, Lord, I want you to.
happy Sunday, Wayland Baptist Church. Let's give the Lord a praise for this day. Come on, if you're not tired yet, give God a praise for this day. Our daily bread, this day. One we've never seen before, this day. Hallelujah. Why don't you wave at three people and tell them happy Sunday, happy Sunday. Come on, turn around and wave at someone and tell them happy Sunday. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for his mercy endureth forever. I feel a praise. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth <laughs> forever. To him who alone doth great wonders for his mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his mercy endures forever to him that made great lights for his mercy endureth forever the sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever the moon and stars to rule by night here it is church his mercy endureth forever let's give him a thunderous praise for his mercy this heritage sunday lift every voice and sing Ring with the harmonies. Let our rejoicing rise high as the lid. Oh, let it resound. Sing a song. Oh. Oh, sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us facing the rising sun of our new day. Oh, let us march on till victory, victory. Stony the road, oh, stony the road. We trod bitter the chastening. Oh, yet with a steady beat, steady beat, have not our we come to this place. Come to the place on which our father sat. Here's a testimony. We have come over away with the tears has been won. Slaughtered out from the gloomy past till now we stand oh where the bright gleam of our star is cast god of our weary years god of our weary years god of our sire Thou who has brought us thus far on. Thou who has by, by thy might, you've led us into. God, keep us forever. Keep us forever. Oh God, help us. 
lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met be lest our hearts drunk with the wine shadow beneath thy hand may forever stand true to our God true to our name Timberland. come on bless the Lord Morning, church. I'm Brother George Privet, and I will be doing the morning prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your word says in Matthew 18, verse 20, that where two or more gather in your name, you are in their midst. Father, we welcome your presence here today. Yes, Lord. Father, we begin today by giving you thanks. Your love and grace endures forever. It never stops. We thank you, Father, for revealing yourself to us through your word. Bless our pastor today as he shares your message with us. And as we worship today, we pray that your word will fill our hearts our minds and our souls. And Father, when we leave your great house of worship, we pray that we will take your word with us. These and all other blessings we pray for. Amen. 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 Man, I say amen for the Privet family. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. My name is Sister Paulette Privet, and I will be reading from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 28. And he rose that night and took his two wives and his two female servants and his 11 sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. A man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Bless the reading of his word. Come on, why don't you just tell somebody one thing God did for you this week, amen. If you wanna walk over to him, go ahead, lean over to him, elbow him, tell him one thing God did for him. Come on, brothers, bless us with that Jesus is his name. Come on, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is mighty as a 
the mountain, he is. Wider than the river, he is. Deeper than the ocean, Jesus is his name. He is. Strength when there is weakness, he is. Joy when there is sorrow, he is. Food for the souls, Jesus is his name. Jesus, Jesus is in every day, yesterday, and forevermore. Jesus is his name. He is Lily of the Valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the Rose of Sharon. Jesus is his name. He is Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. Jesus is his name. Jesus. Jesus is his name. Every day. Yesterday. And forevermore, Jesus is his name. Jesus, Jesus is his name. Every day, every day the same. Yesterday and forevermore, Jesus is his name. Joy, joy, joy in his name. So much joy, joy, joy in his name. There's joy, joy, joy in his name. So much joy, joy, joy in his name. Power, power, power in his name. So much power, power, power in his name. Power. Power in his name. Power. Power. Power in his name. Yesterday and forevermore. Yesterday and forevermore. Yesterday and forevermore. Jesus Come on, clap your hands for a little while. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus! Jesus! Jesus is his name. Jesus! Jesus is his name. Jesus. Healing. 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 Come on, brother. Come on. There's healing. 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 healing in his name. Power. Power in his name. Power. Power. So much power. And there's joy. Joy. Joy in his name. Yesterday, today, forevermore. Yesterday and forevermore. Yesterday and forevermore. Jesus is his name. Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a praise if you know there's power and joy in his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome 
to Wayland Radio. Here's some news you can use. Watch us live each Sunday via the church website, Facebook, or YouTube. And don't forget to sign up for our group texts to always stay informed. Prayer for the week. We are praying for believers to love thy neighbors as thyself. Join us online weekly for Bible study and worship service. There is something for everyone. We also have Monday night prayer service every Monday night at 7 p.m. Celebrate Black History Month with us by supporting a black church this week. Spirit Sunday will take place on February 27th. We ask that you come in repping your school, fraternity, or sorority that you are a part of. Midweek Praise at the Village will take place on Wednesday, March 2nd from 11 to 12 p.m. weekly. Join in to hear music by the Swap Choir and a preached word by our very own Pastor Robert E. Young. We are starting fresh with a new Waylon Cares, Waylon Informs emailed list. If you desire to continue receiving updates, please send us your email address again by signing up using the QR code on your phone. Show your pride with some official merchandise from Wayland Baptist Church by Carjay Designs. You can purchase these items by emailing Carjay Designs directly. Stay connected and download the Wayland Baptist Church app on all your mobile devices. Please refer to our website for more information on these events and don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter for daily inspiration. Thank you for tuning into Wayland Radio for your weekly announcements. Have a blessed day.
you, sir? Mr. President, this is Lester Townsend. He's 108 years old. No, he's not. You're lying about your age. <laughs> you're, you're the grandson of a slave. Oh, man. Shaking hands man. with the President of the United States. That's something States. right there. So how come you look so good? What's your secret? <laughs> huh? I haven't found it. What are you eating? <laughs> Whatever they bring me. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to well, see Well, what an honor to, what, what an honor to see you. I'm just going to try to make sure I, 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 I look half as good as you. <laughs> when I'm 100, much less 108. So All right, so nice to see you, sir. God bless you. Good morning, Waylon. Are there any visitors with us today? If so, would you please stand? Amen, amen. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Young, First Lady Misha Young, and the uh, pastoral family, uh, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are happy that something woke you up this morning and say, go to Wayland Baptist Church. We hope that you find and receive whatever it is that you're looking for. We hope that you felt the presence of the Lord. We hope that you felt the love and joy of God. We want you to know that we pray for you already, and we pray that you will have a remaining and entire blessed week in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. We pray right now that if you have a church home, that you would let your church and your family know that we did you good over here. And that if you don't have a church home, that you would decide to pick Whalen as your church home. Amen. Someone's going to hand you a packet if you would be kind to fill it out and return it to uh, an usher. Amen. Good morning to you all. What a blessing it is just to be in the presence of the Lord once again. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Yeah. Yes, God. Woo yeah, God. You're so good. Mm. Amen, amen, amen. And for those who are visiting with us for the very first time um, or by way of live stream, I'm Brother Brian Bowman of the Whalen Baptist Church. And on behalf of the Compassionate Care Fold, I'm here to present you Whalen Cares. Each week, the Whalen Baptist Church Care Fold had information of importance to present to our congregation. This week's focus is, in trying times, keep trying. The contemporary English version of 24 Proverbs 24.10 says, don't give up and be helpless in times of trouble. Life is filled with things you can't control. And many people let that keep them from pursuing the dream God has put in their heart. In the middle of uncontrollable circumstances and problems, learn to live your life for God and do whatever he's called you to do. In other words, you control the uncontrollables and trust God to do the rest. You can control your attitude, your reactions, and how much you trust God. Those are your choices. Limitations are opportunities for creativity. When our church is unable to meet in person for worship, we're more active and effective in other for purposes of our church, our word, worship, witness, and our work. The first year of the pandemic could have been our worst year, and in many certain certainly may have felt it in many ways. Yet it ended up being our church's greatest year for increasing our small groups, developing discipleships launching ministries in the community and reaching more non-believers than we've ever reached before. Amen, God. Thank you, Jesus. This happened because so many people understood that the church is far more than just a worship service. It's a family and it's active every day of the week, not just on Sunday. We couldn't control how the pandemic kept us from worshiping in a building, but we could control how we responded and chose to use the resources that were still available to us. Don't give up and be helpless and times of trouble. Have you stopped trying? Have you given up on something because you lost control of some or part of it? During trying times, you got to keep trying. Look up and outside of yourself. Change your attitude. Take stock of your resources and use them to help others. This could be your greatest year. I hope this information has been helpful and beneficial to you. 
Let's continue to be kind. Let's continue to love and love on one another. If you have not been fully back and boosted, be prayerful of those efforts. Let's remember our three W's, washing our hands, watching our distance. And if we have to be out amongst large crowds, please, please wear your face coverings. And as always, be encouraged to have a Christ-centered life. Thank you for your time. See ya. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in health, even as your soul prosper, greet you in the wholeness of Jesus Christ. We are a vibrant Ephesians 4 church servant in today's world. Give God a hand clap of praise. I'm excited about Heritage Sunday. Hey, if you have on some heritage gear, would you please stand? We'd like to see how you're representing our ancestors. If you have on something kente, something African, not just your skin, but something you're wearing. Amen. <laughs> Guide my feet, Lord, while I run this race. Oh, guide my feet, Lord, while I run this race. Oh, God, my everybody, let's stand and sing that together. Oh, while I run this race, cause I don't want to run this race. And anybody here from the country? Come on, let's sing this little song. Oh, hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Oh, hold my hand, Lord, while I run. Oh, hold my hand, Lord, while I run this race. Cause I don't want to run this race in vain. Guide my feet, Lord. Guide my feet, Lord. Hey, I guide my feet. Thank you, media. While I run this race, I need you to guide. Guide my feet, Lord. While I... How many know you didn't make it this far on your own, but God, he held your hand. I don't want to run this race in vain. One more time. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand, Lord. Oh, my. Hold, hold my hand, Lord. Wow. I see the mothers. I see the mothers rocking back and forth. Hold my hand, Lord. <laughs> How many of you come to have church this morning? I, how are you glad to be alive? Yes, Lord. One line of this, I gotta go. Oh, this morning when I rose, Lord, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I got out of my bed, Lord, I didn't have. This morning when I rose, Lord. I didn't have no now oh I didn't have no doubt in my mind how many God made a way for you I knew that the Lord would make a way I didn't have no doubt come on wailing he'll make a way for you I didn't have no doubt I knew that the Lord would make a way I didn't have no doubt I didn't have no doubt in my mind hallelujah I know you got to move on but then mother Jones would add her own thing to it she would say no doubt no doubt I didn't have I know that's what she made up. She said, no doubt, no doubt, I didn't have. <laughs> I don't care what the devil try to tell you. No doubt, no doubt, I didn't have no doubt. That's it. I didn't have no, have no doubt in my mind. Amen, 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 amen. 
Amen. A amen. Uh, 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 yeah. Somebody just say, no doubt. No doubt. We, we, I want to thank God for, of course, our leaders, co-coordinators, some of your servants, ministry leaders, members and friends, family. Y'all, I had to do this. I want to thank God. There are persons in Tennessee and North Carolina and Ohio, Mississippi and Florida who watch us every week and they send their, yeah, they, they, they send their support and seed. So we want to thank God that we are a national church in Baltimore. Come on, let's give God a praise. For, and to Sister Deborah Everett, who manages the online activity, I just didn't want to skip a Sunday without uh, thanking you for what you do. I want to thank the Equipping Council, Sister Vivian Jones. I don't know if she's here, but she put together a gem and a jewel of a black history booklet. Amen. This booklet. Amen. Amen. It's a booklet of activities, facts, and exercises designed to create a curiosity of the mind, increase learning, and recognize some of the notable black people who have made a difference in the world. They have labored. This is a thick encyclopedia of rich uh, black info, history, and fun. Uh, we try to be conservative, so we're asking that you get one per household, that you all do these activities together. Uh, there are pages and pages of it, and so you can share in that. I believe after church, some will be made available in the back. Somebody help me. Give, send me a note. Okay, Sister Wicks. Sister Wicks has them. Amen. One per household. Amen. One per what? So if you live with them, they're in your household. If they ever came over for a meal, they're in your household. <laughs> if you ever lent them a dollar and they didn't give it back, they're in your household. All right. So please, let's be mindful uh, of that. At, in the end of March, March 31st, we will purge the current email distribution list, amen. If you're receiving emails now, good, but you still need to sign up for the new list. Please indulge us. We need your patience on that. I'm giving it another month because on March 31st, if you had not signed up either with the QR code or with the slips that we have, you will not receive the emails, but no worry, no worry. If you're not receiving the emails, you can still call the church or email front office and ask to be included. But we want to centralize our communication. Three of my pastoral focuses are church administration, staff and leadership development, and worship readiness. How many of you know that together we are better? Amen. <clears throat> together we are better. You receive in your souvenir booklet next week. I'll provide uh, some more uh, opportunities for you to get that booklet. I have mine. It's on my desk. It is a it's, it's a nice, really nice gem, nice piece. And so we want to make sure those who paid for it receive it. Let the church wave your hand and say, "Amen, Amen." Don't forget to support. Is this a third week of February or the fourth? Third. So really, we're going to be supporting a nonprofit, a black nonprofit organization. If you own a nonprofit, please stand up. A not for profit, some type of community outreach. Or, amen. Come on, stand up. Stand up if you're here. Either you own it or you work for one. Amen. We want to make sure we support one of our own this week. Send $10, send $20, send $50 to help them in their mission, to help them in their efforts to make life best or better for someone else. Come on, give God a praise for, for them. Men, y'all can start, you coming down? All right, you stand up, okay, good. Amen, that's pretty much all I have. We're excited about our green book. I saw the renderings of it this week, Deacon Larry Smith and his team. Y'all, when we put this out, it's gonna be almost like an exact replica of the original one from the 50s. It is awesome. We want to thank you all for your support in the first edition. In the first edition, there'll be more to come over the years, but thank you for helping us to build our own business directory, uh, entrepreneur directory here at uh, Whalen. Amen. How many of you thank God for all the gifts that are in the house? All the gifts. If you made black history, stand up so we can recognize you. If you were the first to do something or the last to do something or... You thought you were historical? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. What was it? I'm, a, I'm feeling liberal today. One, one more time. What y'all clapping for? 
You don't even know. MBA from John Hopkins University. I know Dig Hall, I know you historic. You look historic. First in this family to graduate. Come on, that's major in, in the black family. Come on, thank God. Amen. How many of you were the first black person to get up in your house this morning? <laughs> Sister Wicks, did you have something? I saw you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen and amen. Have not our men just lifted our spirits in song and praise and worship this morning? Come on, brothers, and prepare us for the word of God. Just a second, I thank God for good ministers. I told them to remind me. Sister Doc Spivey, come on up. How many of you glad that God gave you something to give in the offering? Someone else gave a testimony. Deacon Hayden, Hayden gave one, Brother Bowman and some others. Giving that first fruit offering has just opened a floodgate of financial blessings in their lives. And brothers and sisters, we're not saying you have to give up. Not give up. We're not saying for first fruit offerings that we want you to give this week's pay, we're saying a week of pay. Is that different? You hear the inflection? Not this week, amen. It's not responsible for you to give you a week of pay and you don't eat at home. <laughs> oh, got quiet on a preacher. Uh -uh. I keep it real. God wants you blessed. Amen. But he don't, he don't know. I'm giving it all. No, feed family. Do, take care of what you need to take care of. It is a sacrifice. Say, say amen. But your first ministry is home. It, it got quiet on pastor. It got quiet. I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey Amen. You, you, you always got enough to tithe. You got quiet on the minute. What happened to all the singing and rejoicing? If you don't have enough to tithe, that means you're spending it. You always have 10%. Can I get an amen? Amen. There's 10% in a, in, 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 a, in a dime, a dollar, and beyond. So you can't be God's giving. Amen. Amen. You, ought to, you ought to not be able to sleep at night if you don't give some. I feel convicted. I, I eat out almost every day. I get, who do I get? I get corned beefs. And I go to the R House. I go to Charles Village. Come on, I go to Honey Grow. I go to BR Burger. I do it all. And how dare I come to church? Or, or, I, don't have to go, I don't have to be in church anymore to give. I can give it on my phone on a Tuesday morning. Amen. Say amen. amen. So thank you for your online giving. Amen. When, you, when we go to our entrances, exits, you may you have an opportunity to give. Dr. Spire, give us a quick prayer, blessing of the offering, please. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Heavenly Father, our grateful Lord. Lord God, we lift this offering up to you, Lord God. G is for give, I for invest, B for victory, E for eternity. Lord God, you gave your only begotten son to us. Let us give our grateful from our hearts, Lord God. We lift the offering up to you for the gratitude of our love, Lord God. Let it be an uplift and building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I need the Lord to lead and guide me every day. Every day. As I travel along this Christian way. No affliction. No affliction without my soul. I'm determined. I'm determined to my you know I've got to have Jesus. Oh, no. 
I need the Lord to lead and guide me every day. Every day. As I travel along this Christian way. No affliction. No affliction to block my soul. I'm determined to reach my goal. You know what I've got? And I pray, I pray, I pray, Lord, I pray, 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 I ask the Lord, ask the Lord, of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Don't exalt the preacher, don't exalt the pew. I preach the gospel simple, full, and free. Amen. men will gladly follow him who once taught, I'll draw all men unto me. It was read in your hearing, hearing earlier, Genesis chapter 32. We're going to just read verse 28 in the interest of time. Verse 28 in the interest of time. Let's say amen again for our, our men. 
I'll pray. And to our entire music and arts department, let's thank God for them, how they're growing. And then he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a priest thou hast thou power with God, prince has thou power with God, and with man and have prevailed. I want to preach from this thought, a change is going to come. Change is going to come. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, a change. I was born by the river. In a little tent. And oh, just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long time coming. But Sam Cooke said, but I know change is going to come. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. Because I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. I go to the movies and I go where? I go downtown. <laughs> you know the song. Somebody keep telling me don't hang around it. Then he goes on to say, then I go to my brother and I say, brother, help me please. But he winds up knocking me down. Well, back down on my knees. He contemplates there have been times when I thought I couldn't last for long. But now I think I'm able to carry on. It's been a long time coming, but I know a change is going to come. Here's a thought for today's sermon. There is no change without a struggle. Amen. With this current generation, Xers, Gen Xers, YZ, Elemental P, um, so far removed from blatant segregation, so far removed from identifiable racism, no more whips and chains and billy clubs and dogs or water hoses, now it's dog whistles, subliminal bigotry, sophisticated prejudice, and systemic racism. I'm afraid, I was be critical this morning, I'm afraid we might be raising a generation that cannot fight. <laughs> not physically, not physically, they can throw hands, but I mean fight internally. I'm afraid, if I be critical today, I'm afraid that we're teaching them to retreat at the first sign of struggle. No mental toughness or spiritual fierceness. Quitting after one failed attempt. And then pacifying them with gadgets and tablets and pats on the backs and paying their bills and their late fees, solving all their problems. <laughs> if, don't, if you can't say amen, say ouch or something. Say, Come on, still on your insurance, jacking up your credit, coming in last place, and you saying, it's okay. And this pacification disables their inward tenacity and their desire to be independent and leaving us with unprepared little grown men and women. In the famous quote of Frederick Douglass, if there is no struggle, then there is no progress. But God... But, but God, Minister Conway, God uses the womb of struggle to birth needed change in your life. Change, somebody say change. Change is incubated in struggle. Change brawls with former methods and mindsets and madness. Change will be violently attacked by the powers of the past. Can I tell you that the only absolute truth about life is that everything absolutely changes. Scientifically, anatomically, biologically, chemically, mathematically, geographically, socially, culturally, educationally, economically, anthropologically, and spiritually because anything alive will change. Nudge your neighbor, make sure they're alive. Go ahead, nudge them, nudge them. 
And then ask them, have you gone through any changes lately? Ask them, have you? <laughs> the absence of change is the presence of death. Are you following me? If it's not changing, then it's likely dying. But a God, a God, a God-ordained change always produces new life, always produces growth, always makes us prosperous. A God change is a blessing. I'll say it again for the 25 in the bank that hadn't caught me yet. A God change is a blessing. Has God changed something in your life and it became a blessing? Ah, okay, all right. And if we're going to remain a, a vibrant Ephesians 4 church serving in today's world, then a change has got to come. So in what ways, in what areas, or Phyllis, in what areas of Jacob's life did he struggle so a change could come? Can I preach 10 more minutes like this, family? So here's the context. Jacob, the son of Isaac and Rebekah, the grandson of Abraham, younger twin of Esau, whom he jousted with in their mother's womb. Jacob was born holding the heel of his brother so that his name was Jacob, which means he takes by the heel to supplant, to deceive, to attack from the back. <laughs> Rebecca did not want her birthright blessing of Isaac on Esau. Y'all remember that drama? Yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, the mother, didn't want the birthright blessing of Isaac the father to be on Esau, she favored Jacob. And so she and Jacob devised a scheme to trick old Isaac and Jacob stole Esau's birthright, causing a civil war in the family years of disdain and disconnect. The Lord now telling Jacob to return back home. Now he must make amends with his disgruntled brother Esau, who has become a mighty leader and a wealthy landowner. Esau is armed and dangerous. Jacob sends Esau robust and extravagant peace offerings, and Esau sends a message. Tell Jacob, I'm coming to see him. Tell Jacob, it's going to be on site. It's going to be a problem. I'm going, it's going to be a situation. I've been wanting to put my hands on him for a minute. <laughs> can I, come on, can we talk for a little while? So fearing... Okay, <laughs> So the impending confrontation between the trickster and the tricked is going to be explosive. So fearing the possibility of things going uh, back, we pick up here in uh, uh, verse 22, and the scripture says that at this night, while he's traveling toward meeting his brother, at this night Jacob got up and took his two wives and two maid servants. That's another sermon. And after he sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions, and here it is. So Jacob was left alone. Somebody just shout out to your mask, the struggle is real. Just, Jacob was left alone. So again, in what areas of, of life, Jacob's life, did we see that struggle caused the change? Here it is. The first struggle is you have to struggle with Yourself. He had to struggle with his self. Some of y'all missed that. It wasn't deep enough. Somebody just touch yourself and say, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Somebody say, self. Self, a person's essential being that distinguishes them from another. Self-awareness is the ability to focus on yourself, your actions, your thoughts, your emotions. And here it is, Jacob had been ripping and running and rushing all of his life. But when God got him alone, that's when Jacob began to wrestle with himself. Let me see by a show of hands how have you ever had to get by yourself to get yourself together? And I learned this the hard way that loneliness can be the gateway to self-awareness. Our lives can be so cluttered with comrades and crowds and the culture that we have low storage for our own authenticity. That the trueness of who we are becomes smeared by influencers and uh, celebrities and peers and parents. And like Jacob, God will bring you to a critical crossroad in your life 
where you have to deal with your own mess. It's getting quiet in here. I know it's tense in here, but anybody here God ever had to show you yourself and you wish he hadn't done so? See, 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 we're always praising God for, for, the, for the windows, but sometimes we got to praise God for the mirrors before the windows. <laughs> y'all catch that next week. Y'all, y- y'all, y'all sing too good. They're not even saying nothing to the, to the sermon. But, but how many know sometimes before you can look out to your future, look out to your advancement, look out the window, God has to give you a mirror so you can confront the person in the mirror so you don't mess up when you go through the window. <clears throat> Got to struggle with self. It's like the coach. The coach wanted his quarterback to enhance his performance. So, so, Reverend Rick, so the coach sent for the QB, called the QB away from the team, away from the team, secluded him in the room, closed the door, have a seat. He tells him, you have potential to be great. You have strengths. You also have weaknesses and threats, but there's some opportunity. So the coach cuts off the lights, and in a dark room, they review footage. And they review his missteps, his mistakes, and better options. And here it is, sometimes you can't improve until the coach, God, brings you into a dark place to see yourself. Can I get an amen? And sometimes in life, God will bring you into this close, dark theophany with you and him where God replays the footage of your journey and points out your faults and fails and frailties, but also shows you he covered you in his mercies. And this is all I'm trying to tell you. You might not shout, but in this season, somebody say this season. And this season, don't view isolation as punishment. View it as promotion. Because sometimes God has to work on me in private before he presents me to the public. Can I get an amen? That's why David said, Oh Lord, thou hast searched me and know me. Know my downstanding and my uprising. You know me from afar off. You know where I go. Search me, Lord. See, you point one at somebody else, you know, four come back at you. Somebody say struggle with self. That's the first thing. Secondly, there's going to be a struggle with his strikes. I'm in the word. Let me read it from the NRSV. It says, verse 25, he's wrestling with a man. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket. <laughs> And Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Somebody say strike. A strike, a hit, forcibly, deliberately. One's hand, weapon, or something. He was deliberately stricken by this man. Watch this. Jacob's hip was put out of joint. Watch this. The man was close enough to Jacob that he could touch him. Okay, sir. He was he was close enough where he could touch him and strike him. That's why you gotta be careful of the people who you bring close to you. <laughs> Can I get an amen? How I many are you not making the same relational decisions in 2022 that you did in 2021? The pandemic exposed some haters in disguise. Some people were just trying to get close to you so they could strike you. Deliberate strikes from people who are close enough to touch you. Strikes like betrayal and jealousy and backstabbing and manipulation and misinformation, unexpected bad news, sicknesses, stupidity, infidelity, school loans, rising gas prices. Is there anybody here can say, Pastor, I have survived some strikes in my life. I don't look like what I've been through. I do not look like on the outside the struggle I have on the inside. I've been hit a few times. Somebody say amen. One military strategist said, when the enemy strikes you fast, it's to throw you off balance. And Jacob, Jacob's hip was put out of joint. Uh, mm. 
The other Sunday I talked about leaning. Come on, because when, when the enemy <laughs> knocks you out of joint, the only thing you can do is lean on the Lord. But I found, I found some hope in his homiletics because the scripture says Jacob was hip was put out of joint as he wrestled. <laughs> he was struck, but he kept wrestling. He was tenacious, he was resilient. He recovered quickly. Jacob had to be black. Come on, somebody. He, he knew how to take a hit and bounce right back. He knew how to take the back of a pig and make chitlins and put vinegar and hot sauce on it. He had to be black. Come on. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Is there anybody here that knows sometimes in life uh, you have to continue to fight even though you're hurt, even though you're in pain, even though you're disappointed? Do I have 35 folk in here today that says life is not perfect but all is well? I know how to take a strike and come back and recover. Somebody let the devil know, you might have struck me, but I stayed in the fight. I'm almost there. It reminds me of Ali and Norton, 73. And, 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 and long story short, at the end of the fight, uh, Ali told, told the reporter, he, he said, Norton, that big old ex-marine, big muscle head, he, he broke my jaw in round two. Y'all missed it already? All right. <laughs> he, said, he said, Norton broke my jaw in round two. He said, and I, and, I, and I went the distance with a broken jaw. He says, I may not, amen, have won the fight, but I stayed in it. Is there anybody here you can say something, you know, that you took some strikes and I know some of us want to raise our children in the comforts of the county and the safety of the suburbs, but every now and then take them back around the way. Come on, over east and over west, take them down south, take them to their roots and to their heritage. Let them see there was three to a bed and six in a car when there wasn't no car seats. Come on, growing what you had to eat, the smokehouse and the outhouse come on is there anybody here that earned some stripes because you've been stricken yet you survived say yes has God been good to you today has God been good to somebody in here are you glad that you're black and that you're proud are you glad that the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way we had to struggle but we're still here <laughs> I got five more minutes In struggle with, struggle with himself. Then he had to struggle with his strikes. And thirdly, finally for me today, he had to struggle with his significance. Because now he's fighting, he's fighting for his life now. He's fighting for his life. Scripture says they fighting until daybreak. Yeah, it's on and popping and crack a lacking. And it, the man said, let me go for his daybreak. Jacob says, I will not let you go until you what? Until you bless me. And he says, what is your name? Then we get into the actual blessing. But the point is in the struggle with significance or the quality of his, the, the quality or the worth of his life. He's saying, this, is ha this has to be for something. That's what I'm getting to. Have, have you ever been to a stage, a struggle in your life, where it was so heavy, so hard, where you looked up to God and said, this got to be for something. I'm, I, I'm not being selfish, but can a brother get a blessing? Come on, can a sister get a house? Come on, can I, <laughs> can, can I get this job? Come on, somebody. Can, can my child not catch this disease? Can, is there anybody here can have a, hum, a humanity moment and say, there are some seasons in my life when I say, God, a blessing will be good right about here. Come on, about a week of no drama will be good right here. About, do I have a witness in here that says, this has to be significant? <laughs> yes, sir. And as black people, we had to protest 
for our humanity and broadcast our contributions and impose our, our importance. And, our, and one of our most disregarded black leaders, Reverend Jesse Jackson, or Reverend Jesse in 1972 gave us a black litany. He says, I am somebody. I may be poor, but I am significant. I am somebody. I may be young, but I am somebody. I may be on welfare, but I am somebody. I may be small, but I am somebody. I may have made mistakes, but I am somebody. My clothes are different. My face is different. My hair is different, but I am somebody. I am black. I am brown or white. I speak a different language, but I must be respected. I must be protected, never rejected. I am God's child. And Jacob said, listen, I'm almost there. And Jacob had an epiphany. He said, this struggle will not be a waste of time. I am somebody. I will grow from this struggle. My territory will be enlarged. My business will flourish. My career will advance. My investments will increase. I will not let it go until it blesses me. <laughs> that's, that's all the shout I have for you today because it, it was too deep for me to to, for me to sing it out so I had to holler it out but is there anybody here that declared this is my season <laughs> for grace and favor this is my season to reap what I've sown this is my season for my harvest come on the scripture saying Galatians 6 come on be not weary in well doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not I need about 25 whaling folks people of the way to jump on your feet say the struggle is real but I'm a survivor because greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world I serve a savior who's a survivor because one Friday they hung him high they stretched him wider he hung his head and for me he died but that's not how he struggled in because early ah, early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands death where is thy sting? Crave, where is thy victory? Is there anybody in Wayland that declares, I may have been hit, I may have been stricken, but I'm still here. I'm still alive. I'm still going to praise him because when I think, yes, of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I need you to look down your row. Look to your left and to your right. Do you know what you're looking at? You're looking at a miracle. Ah, I should have been dead sleeping in my grave. But God made the devil behave. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, the devil thought he had me. But I got away. I said, I got away. I need somebody to lift your hands and let the devil know I got away. I got away. Because when the praises go up, those blessings come down. I may have struggled, but I'm still eating good. I may have struggled, but I'm still driving good. I may have struggled, but there's food on the table. There's clothes on my back. My family is here. And the ones that's not here, they're in glory. I've got a reason. Uh, I've got a reason to praise him. Say, I Come on, lay your hands on yourself and say, keep on wrestling. Keep on wrestling. If one door is closed, look for another door. If one doctor don't give you a good report, find another doctor. Whose report will you believe? I shall believe the
the report of the Lord lay hands on yourself and say pray again apply again pay for it again won't he do it won't he do it oh you will not manifest Israel until you let Jacob struggle because God wants to elevate promote and bring some of you before astounding greatness but you can't go into new spaces with an old spirit. (laughs) The next stage of blessings for you needs an Israel anointing, not a Jacob personality. You can't take the deceiver into a promised land. And I know many of us have been in the way many of us have matured in the gospel matured and all of that but lift your hands and just say i know i've been changed what key is that sir lift your hands people of the way I don't know the whole thing. I'm not going to try, but I do know. I know I've been trained. I know I've been trained. Good God, of the high. No, I've been trained. You know the angels in heaven don't sign my name. One more time in the house. I, do you believe it? Do you know you have evidence? No, I've been changed. Good God. I, For those of the church are open, no, I've been changed. You know the angels in hell done sad. I stepped in the water, and the water, the water was cold. You know the angels in hell. Come on, let's take it down home. Sign my name. What'd it do? It chilled my body, but it did not, did not harm my soul. You know the angels. Come on, join the church. Give your life to Jesus today. Make a decision. This is your day to come down. Oh, how I know. Hey, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, is there one today? You don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. You don't have a church home. We're growing even in the pandemic. I say we're growing even in the pandemic. There's a spiritual revival. There's an awakening. There's an awakening. Come on. I looked at my hands and my hands look new. You know the aim. That's how we used to do the meter down home. My folks from Crew, Virginia, they didn't 
They didn't speed up no singing. They just let it, come on, let it fill the house. Come on, look at my feet. Somebody look down at my feet. Yeah, I don't walk the way I used to walk. And they did too. You know the angels in the heaven. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise if you know you're in the transformation process. Come on, say give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Were you blessed by worship today? Were you blessed Heritage Sunday? Let's, hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. Hallelujah. I, I want to say this, amen. I want to give a special thank you. Many of you uh, have gone viral or many of you are on social media and the internet don't even know it. I'm going to tell you why. Because we have a phenomenal photography ministry. Where is she? Where is sister? Uh, it's Bordley. I, mean, I call her either Bordley or Bridges. I know it's not what it be. I, I've been doing it for a whole year. Amen. She's up there. She's going around getting cameos of us in worship. Come on, somebody. The ministry of presence. Somebody say presence. Presence. So what I want, what I want you to do, I want you to do, for those of you who are on social media and all of that, if, you, if you're not, ask your child or grandchild to log you in on their account. Amen. Don't go through their pictures. Amen. Just go to our wheel and... Facebook page and you'll see live action cameo worship captions. Amen. Weekly. Amen. It's not stuff from five years ago. Amen. Which is good, but it's weekly, weekly updated pictures of today's world. Come on, give God a praise. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. We're going home now. I'm so glad. Oh, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory. Pick it up, bud. Faster. Oh, when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Come on, minister. I was in trouble Jesus lifted me singing glory hallelujah oh, when I was a sinner Jesus lifted me before I knew Jesus y'all he still lifted me when I was a sinner Jesus lifted me, singing glory. One more verse, one more verse, one more verse. Now he is my savior. Now he is my savior. Keeps on lifting me. Now he is my savior. Keeps on lifting me. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, Heritage Sunday has been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing make you afraid. All things pass. But God is unchanging, y'all. Brothers, patience is enough for everything. You who have God, we who have God, we lack nothing. Because God alone, God and God alone, sir, thank you for coming today. Thank God for our guest today. Huh? Alone is sufficient. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
all creatures. God bless your worship planning team, everybody who's involved. God has been glorified today. Heavenly hope. Yeah, praise. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up the light of his countenance round about you. In Jesus' name, bless you on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back to Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. You survived the struggle. A change has come. Oh, oh, oh.